Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk, and uh, today I thought we'd have a look at this. This is an idea I got off a um, a chap that goes by the um, YouTube name of Shango 066's um, channel, and it's a way of finding faulty electrolytic capacitors, but uh, not using a capacitance meter or a um, LCR meter like this one. Uh, and I don't destroy everything trying to get it out uh, like that one because uh, not everyone's got these things they're not terribly expensive um, they're not terribly accurate either the cheap ones but uh, it does it does basically um, so you can have one of these but if you haven't got one of them it showed quite an interesting way for testing for uh, bad electrolytic capacitors and basically that's to pass audio through them so I've basically I've made this little test rig um, to just have a go with the idea and what I've got is this is all built entirely out of junk um, I've got a speaker that I um, took out of an old Altec Lansing um, computer um, speaker um, one side was dead and I used that out of the other side uh, it is a really really nice high quality speaker I must admit um, then everything is out of my junk box basically it's got a little um, am little 3 watt amplifier inside here and it's one of the little um, Velleman um, little um, prototype amplifiers you can buy like a little kit amplifier you get the chip and the PCB and everything and even the heat sink and everything all in a little kit um, this is the type of thing uh, this is one of their little preamps um, not sponsored by Velleman or anything but um, the kits can be quite useful but anyway uh, it's one of the little mono um, power amps that I've got inside there um, to power it I'll just have a slurp some coffee and what we've got we've got a little, um, little mp3 player here a little uh, 99p um, ebay special mp3 player and what I've done, um, I would normally be um, blasting some Sabaton or some um, other raucous heavy metal through this, but um, being this is YouTube and they get all um, cryy about um, using copyrighted material, um, I've got that um, packed full of uh, royalty free um, music for now, um, so I can demo this thing. So that is full of um, just random royalty free music. In fact, I can demonstrate this um, now. Um, I've got them two leads connected together, I'll explain that um, for the moment, but I'm just set this play in. Hopefully we should get this to play. There we go. As you can see, and you can hear, um, basically just acting like a little powered speaker at the moment. Straight these wires, and that goes out. And what we've got, if you look at these, um, I don't know if you can see very well on the camera there, can I zoom you in any? Let me have a look, see if I can zoom you in and not upset the whole camera. Yeah, we can uh, zoom you in a little bit there. And uh, perhaps tip this up so you can see it properly. There we go. Uh, let me see if I can just stand this up on an angle like that so you can actually see it. There we go. So basically what we've got, if we just bring that wire out of the way so we can actually see things. We've got a little um, powered speaker here that I've um, knocked up, like I said. And... Out coming out of the power amp, basically I've broken the um, circuit between the power amplifier and the speaker. That's why if I touch these together, obviously it works. And what we can do is we can put a capacitor in there. And here we've got a brand new, what uh, value is this one? Um, just see. I've got a brand new 100 UF um, electrolytic capacitor here. And we put that in circuit. Can hear it actually you can hear a good you can hear music through it and it doesn't sound particularly distorted let's just disconnect that now so what I've got here basically is a way that we can then pass audio through a capacitor and the capacitor is good then the audio should come out it might cut the frequency slightly because that's what different values of capacitors will do to an audio frequency but if it sounds reasonable and undistorted you can have a pretty good idea that the capacitor is going to be alright and what I've done is I've wired this switch so basically I've got two I've got um, two terminal posts coming out here so I can have a brand new tester capacitor in one side of the circuit 
and then open leads on the other side of the circuit there. So um, this is the 22 UF capacitor I've got on the like on the test side. So that's a brand new test capacitor. And I'll flip the switch over. Now you'll hear this sounds slightly different than the 100 UF, but it still sounds clear. You see, it's a little bit quieter, a little bit more tinny, but it still sounds all right. And that is a 22 UF capacitor. So what we can do there with the open leads is, I think here I've got some 22 UF capacitors. Yeah, that's a 22. These are all out of my, um, wherever it is, there. They're out of uh, capacitors that I've recently taken out of um, equipment that I've been servicing or repairing. So they're either been taken out because I've done like a full recap on a Spectrum um, for someone or for sale. Or uh, they've come out of a power, like a, I think some of these came out of a power supply that I was trying to repair that were um, obviously faulty. I mean, the ones out of the spectrum, they may be faulty, they may not be faulty. I've obviously just done a blanket recap in that case. Um, these ones, I'm not sure, I, it was a very nasty supply uh, that they came out of. There was a lot of leaky capacitors in it. Uh, I think all of them are probably bad, but these, like I said, I don't know. Um, anyway, so let's, like I said, I'll just let you hear what a um, a good 22F capacitor sounds like, and then we will go through whichever ones of these are 22UF. I think these are all ones out of a spectrum. Yeah, I'm pretty certain these blue ones are out of a spectrum. Um, I was working on recently, so that's 100UF. That one is 100UF. That one's 100 UF, and I think that one is as well. Yeah, so we've got some 100 UF capacitors there, and we've got some 22 UF ones um, here. So let's start with these uh, 22 UF capacitors. So I get one of the uh, ones we want to test. Put that in circuit. Oh, and listen to that straight away. Now, if we switch over, remember that's 22 UF capacitor we've got in test there. So if we switch over to that one, you can hear that. We we'll switch back to the one in the test. You can hardly hear anything coming through. So we've obviously we've definitely got a uh, a fault on that capacitor. Let's try another one. No, I mean that one sounds all right. So what we can do is we can switch between the test one and the um, one we're using as our reference. And as you can hear. There's really no difference there, so that could be say is well, that's it back to that side. That we could probably say is a good capacitor actually, or at least it's not fatal. So um, let's try one more of these 22s. And again, that one sounds all right. You can switch it between that one and the other side. So let's try some of these 100s. So all we need to do with this is just uh, take that capacitor out and this is a hundred UF we've got here test capacitor let's stick that in uh, in there instead and like I said this thing literally is just made out of um, anything I had in the junk box like that's off in the back of an old amplifier um, the box I made the power supply is off an old router the vellum and board was actually bought for another project and I went a different way with it so that didn't even cost me anything. Anyway, um, we've got 100 UF, so let's have a listen to that. So we switch the 100 UF on. You see that lets a lot more frequency through. That's almost as low. But that's the way it's shorted. That's the 100 UF capacitor. So let's see what um, these 100 UF capacitors I, um, I've took out of various things. I think this is a Spectrum one. Let's have a listen to this one. So... I can hear a very slight difference there, but it's obviously still not bad, that one. Um, also, it is in the junk pile. Let's have a look at these uh, little 100 UFs here. And let's just uh, stick them in circuit. Ah, now, you can hear there. It's not so distorted, but if we go against the test capacitor, 
and then back to the one under test. You can definitely tell that that's not happy. Let's try another one. I can say that all these I think were, oh dear. Yeah, well I mean, that's the test capacitor. That's the one we've got under test. And I don't even know if whether the camera's picking that up at all. But you can just, just hear some audio coming through there. Let's try another one. This is the last one, I think. Oh yeah, I think this is the last one I've got out of the um, pack that's 100 UF. So let's have a listen to this one. Connect it up. And again, that's the test capacitor. That's the capacitor under test. And I can't even hear anything at all coming through that one. I think that one's completely open circuit. Just as a quick test, we can just we just connect them together like that to get a quick test. But yeah, um, I said I just built this for a bit of fun. Um, I, I saw, um, like I said, Shango uh, 066 doing um, something similar to this. I think he was using an amplifier and an old hi-fi speaker, but basically doing exactly what I've just done here. Um, and he was using it to find faulty capacitors in uh, vintage um, radio and television gear, which is something else that I'm um, I'm interested in. I do mess about with the um, odd valve TV and valve radio, but um, I just wondered whether this technique would be um, any use to us um, looking for bad caps in, say, um, a spectrum board before we powered it up. So I was wondering whether, because there's fairly, only a few values of capacity, you could have some known good capacitors, put them in there, and then just clip your leads across a capping um, circuit on the um, spectrum board, which is not known whether it's good or not, and it'll give you a rough indication whether um, it's safe to power the um, spectrum up, or um, you should really change that cap first. So it's just a thought, um, perhaps just an idea if you don't have a proper um, capacitance meter. Um, something you could uh, perhaps do. So I think I'm going to leave it at that anyway. Um, I thought you might find that interesting. So um, thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.